3D experience for designers. This is going to be focused on what we call X apps. Go ahead, Todd. So my name is Bob McGoy. As you can see, my ugly mug here in the upper left-hand corner. I've been with Computer Data Technology 19 years this month. Um, I'll go my ahead. My name is Randy Simmons. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I was going just on. Turn Bob. it over to you. My name is Randy Simmons. <laughs> uh, I've been with uh, the company for uh, 19 years now. Been using SolidWorks for 20 years, and uh, have my Elite AE from SolidWorks and uh, working on the 3D Experience platform roles now. And and I'm Todd Myers. I am also been in SOLIDWORKS about 14 years now, and I've been with CATI for seven years, also focused on the 3D experience platform and roles. So one of the main things we want to get the point across to you guys today is that the 3D experience platform can get your company connected, uh, connected to data, connected to each other. And they do this by providing tools to bring everybody in your product development process together. Um, the 3D Experience platform is a web-based system of apps that allows you to collaborate, manage, and design anywhere at any time on any device. It also allows you to use the software that you're used to every day and stay connected with those files as well, and communicate throughout the company using communication tools, and allowing you to design anywhere you want to on any device. You also have access to powerful simulation tools that leverage cloud computing uh, to validate your designs. Uh, there's also tight integration with the desktop SOLIDWORKS solution that allows you to bring the work done in the cloud back down to your de desktop and vice versa, which means that you can still take advantage of all the tools that SOLIDWORKS offers today, such as your locally installed simulation tools, your CAM inspection, and more. The 3D Experience platform is going to offer you one central, uh, secure, connected location for all your apps, one subscription, no IT, no server required, no local server at all, no VPN in to get into your data and your apps for people working remotely, and a very high level of communication within the cloud. So a dashboard is how each one of us connects to our data that we need on the 3D Experience platform. Just the same way that you have a dashboard in your car that provides all the information you need to get yourself down the road. Imagine if you can take the information that you needed as a designer and reorganize it in any way you see fit. That's what a dashboard is here inside the platform. We organize it the way that you want to work. So once you have the connector software installed on your system, you're ready to connect to the cloud. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that the 3D experience add-in is activated in your SOLIDWORKS add-in menu. And the add-in enables the 3D experience interface to be placed inside the task pane within SOLIDWORKS. And here you can open and manage your cloud-based files directly within SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the current assembly that I have here is new and the information in the task pane here is telling me that the files have not been saved into the cloud. Well, you can search for files and open them through the 3D Experience, Task Pane, and SOLIDWORKS, but here in the browser, you can also manually navigate the files already saved into your cloud-based vault, giving you the flexibility to work however you want. So from here, I'll simply drag a component from my vault into my open assembly in SOLIDWORKS, which is running on my local machine. And the component is downloaded into the background uh, to my local working directory, and with these local copies now of my data, I can quickly integrate these models into my assemblies without having to deal with latency issues from the web or my local network. And the whole time, the 3D experience platform is keeping track of the status of the files, both in the cloud and on my desktop. So here in this task pane, it's showing me that the file in my working directory is up to date with what is saved in the cloud. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a search. So, you know, looking and browsing for files is one thing, but search capability is another. And here we're just doing a generic search uh, for all the models. And then, of course, we have tags that we can use to filter these down or sort these down. Um, by, based on where this is in a, in a maturity state, who created this file, when this file was created, here we're looking into a specific space that this file is stored in, which will narrow it down to only 21 results for us. So I find the file that I think I want, I right click on it and I get some choices. One of those choices is to be able to preview it. 
This is using a tool called 3D Play, one of the apps uh, that comes with the base roles of the platform. Make sure you've got the right file. Also, if I right click on it, I get some other choices and one of those is gonna be relations. This is gonna show me the parent-child relationships uh, for this part of where this thing is used and what things might be used in this. This is where you can also attach other documents if you need to and they would show up just like children. We'll see that in, in a little bit. So now that I'm sure I've got the right file, uh, we'll just grab that and we'll drag and drop it from my search results into my SOLIDWORKS model. This is downloading a copy in the background from the platform. So that's the only time there's any internet traffic is when you're pulling this file down. Uh, it, it's saving this local copy in your local cache so you're working locally all day long on this file. Once this is in here, we can mate it into place just like any other SOLIDWORKS part. It just came from the platform instead of coming from my hard drive, but now it actually is on my hard drive because the way it does the local cache. We're gonna take a look for another file using a different search, and here we're gonna search by a specific name. We're gonna search for the file name Yoke. We only get four results, and uh, I can do the same things, the preview and so on with this file if I wanted, but I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that Yoke file drag it into SOLIDWORKS. Once again, a, a copy is being pulled down across the internet from the platform to my local cache. Once it's in SOLIDWORKS, it behaves just like any other file, and we can go ahead and mate these two conical surfaces together. There's a lot of other information in that task pane uh, that we can see, and if we drag this uh, wider, this window, this is where it would be nice uh, if you had a second monitor and tore off the task pane and stuck it on the other, but if we drag the Task pane wider, oh, let's go ahead and save this, of course. And now we'll get icons that tell us that all these files are up on the platform. So once again, this is really the only time that there's any internet traffic is when you're pulling files down or saving files up. And now in the status column, we can see that all these files have been saved up to the platform. Now let's take a look at these other columns. We'll just drag this larger since we're only working on one screen here, but you can see there's rows for, or columns for the revision and who has it reserved or checked out, uh, what maturity state it's in for workflow states, uh, where it's saved. There's other columns that can be shown. These can be customized and put into any order you want, uh, but a lot of information in this task pane window. We'll shrink that back down. And then I wanna do one more thing here. I wanna release this part. So getting into the, the workflow of this, I'm gonna right click on that part or any of these parts and go into maturity. And this is right inside of the SOLIDWORKS window gonna let me see my maturity states and my life cycle that's been set up for me. And I have the capability of just right clicking and releasing this uh, to the release state. You may decide to implement a process in your company where it has to go through a change uh, you know, an approval process, and that can be done as well. But here we've just released that. Now going further back into the web browser, you can see I'm looking at a dashboard once again. So I've got a 3D space in the upper left-hand corner. I've got the current state of what files I'm working on in the bottom left, and then I have my 3D play in the upper right. So with that tool, I can come in and look at lots of different file formats. Here, I'm looking at a PDF of a, of a drawing packet. So with some documentation, I can go in and grab, say, a JPEG of something. I can grab a PDF. I can grab a, well, a SOLIDWORKS model. I can grab pretty much anything I want to and drag that on there and be able to pan, rotate, and zoom in a 2D fashion or in a 3D fashion. Now, one of the things I'd also like to be able to do is look at one of the assemblies for that mounting for the, the monitor stand a little bit more closely. So I'm gonna drag a sub assembly on and because I don't need the rest of that, I'll just maximize the 3D play so I can look here. So I've got my arm, I've got some, some bushings, I've got my, my main bar here. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab that, explode that out right inside of a web browser, which is really nice. So with that, I can then come in and start doing other things like, well, go back to the file that Randy just worked on. I wanna to talk to Randy a little bit further about that yoke he just used. So I'm gonna do a search for it and I'm gonna drag that directly off of a search window onto 3D Play. 
now that I've got it back in a 3D play, I can maximize it back and start doing all sorts of things that I would in inside of a standard e-drawing, say like a section view or pulling dimensions. Here, I'm gonna pull a point to point to the, the quadrants of the outside there, just making sure it's in the ballpark of the size I really want for that, for that, that yoke. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a section view and push and pull that. I've got several options of my selection types. I can select vertices, centers, I can select axes. I can drag them from other planes, just like I would in other tools very quickly. But the best part about this is it's inside of a web browser. So I can do this on my phone, my iPad. I could do this on a 10 year old computer and not have any problem. You notice there, I just grabbed my mouse and drew a circle around those holes. And I'm asking if it's tapped. I'm not very good at drawing with my mouse. If you got a touch device, it works pretty good. But if you need to, you can type that information in as well. So now that I've got some questions to ask of Randy, I wanna share that with him and Todd so we can get some feedback. And we do that through our communities. So if you've ever had those situations where you sent an email to somebody on, on a design question, and they didn't get the email or they lost it, it went non-filtered, that's a disconnect between you and that, that designer. Here, because we're putting it in the same place as those 3D models, we're putting them in the platform, they show up in a community of threaded conversations that we have about our design. Allowing us to truly have a threaded conversation. As you can see, I've been talking to Randy and Todd about a few other pieces on this design. And because it is on the platform, just by going into the search, I can search for information about that post as well, just not 3D CAD. So here I'm looking at that, that arm assembly I had up earlier in its, its life cycle. So you can see right now it's in work but I can do lots of other things. I can ask for a new revision. I can ask for a branch, or I can go in and look at the relationships on that model. So you can see that that arm is setting in the modern or monitor stand assembly, but it also has children associated with it as well. You can see that there's a PDF that is a child of that assembly. So as I bring that assembly through its processes, the the platform knows that I have PDFs associated with that, which is great. Okay, so the last thing you know you can explore there in that uh, that lifecycle management tool is you can directly release or change the work state. Uh, of those files from within that you don't have to only do it through the SOLIDWORKS interface. But speaking of that interface, let's go take a look at that now. Uh, and another one of the great ways that you can collaborate with team members is to track projects by its assigning tasks. So you can create and assign tasks for yourself and others, and the platform keeps those team members notified with the status of the tasks as they progress to complete it. So here's the task that was assigned to me, and I'm gonna start acting on that. So I'll simply drag that task from the to do to the in work. And this is going to notify the assigner that I've started to perform this task. And one of the other great benefits of tasks is that you can attach models and documents, images, other information to that task so that the assignee doesn't have to go out and do any searching or browsing for any of the data that they need to perform that task. It's included here and it follows the task through the entire process. And when I'm done with this task, if I have a new deliverable uh, as a result, I can attach that here to the deliverable and the person that assigned me the task can quickly access that information. So this all looks good. So I'm simply gonna drag that to completed. The assigner is gonna get the notification and we'll get back into SOLIDWORKS and take a look at how we can access the same information there. So again, you know, collaborative tasks, just like all the other apps in the cloud, can be accessed from within this task pane in SOLIDWORKS. You simply search for the app you want and click on the icon to open its widget, 
And you know, just like Randy earlier, we can drag this out to give us a little bit more space so we can check the status of all of our current tasks. And so I'll just simply edit this recently completed task to add a comment and let the assigner know that my task is now complete. Randy, I think you're muted, bud. I sure was. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> so uh, just as a wrap up, uh, what you've seen here is some, some of these areas uh, of the 3D Experience platform offering you one central secure connected location for your apps, one subscription, uh, no IT, no server required locally, no VPN in to get to your data or your apps for remote employees, and a very high level of communication in the cloud. Um, this was just showing what the people, SOLIDWORKS users, people who have SOLIDWORKS already, uh, would, would use the platform for every day uh, to check in and check out files and use it as a PDM system. 